From Interior Alaska's most trusted news source, this is the Fairbanks Evening News. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. Our top story, United States Senator Dan Sullivan addressed a joint session of the Alaska Legislature this morning in Juneau. The freshman senator from Alaska gave an update on his first two and a half months in office. Sullivan spoke, to, spoke of efforts to, quote, disarm the Environmental Protection Agency and says he will chair hearings in Fairbanks next month on the Clean Water Act. Alaska's junior senator lauded state lawmakers for their fight against federal overreach, specifically resolutions that support drilling in Anwar, despite the Obama administration's attempt to block development in the area. Citing Russia's military buildup in the Arctic, Sullivan spoke against removing upwards of 10,000 troops from Alaska as the Army looks to downsize personnel from a wartime peak. As a member of the Senate Armed Services Committee, Sullivan says it's important to assess all threats in the Arctic before a single soldier is removed from the 49th state. Shouldn't we understand what the posture is, particularly with a growing Russian militarization? So I'm pushing on a lot of different fronts, getting an O plan, highlighting what the Russians are doing in the Arctic, and making people understand it makes no strategic sense to remove one soldier from Alaska until we understand what the threat level is and until we have an O plan that lays out what we would do. Colonel Joseph Streff took command yesterday of the Alaska Army National Guard from Brigadier General Mike Bridges. The ceremony took place at Joint Base Elmendorf Richardson in Anchorage. This change of command comes in the wake of the bad publicity the Guard received during the sexual misconduct allegations and reported cover-up that took place last year. Colonel Streff said he would focus on changing the culture within the Guard and work to reestablish trust in the organization. We have a, a great opportunity now to uh, reestablish some trust in the organization. Uh, uh, we're striving towards uh, transparency and uh, uh, accomplishing all that with teamwork. Four sets of human remains discovered off a Kenai Trail Saturday night are believed to be those of the Kenai family that disappeared last May. 37-year-old Brandon Jividen, 22-year-old Rebecca Adams and her children, 5-year-old Michelle Hundley and 3-year-old Jarika Hundley disappeared almost a year ago. Officers found what appeared to be the remains of four humans about 15 yards off the trail, along with clothing consistent with the family. They also found a handgun. Investigators are confident the bodies are those of the missing family. See, we're, we're very confident they do. The, the clothes are consistent, uh, the, the size, the, the location, I mean, we're very confident it is, but obviously we'll be looking for the medical examiner's confirmation through, through DNA testing and so forth. Trial began today in U.S. District Court for a Fairbanks man who was allegedly part of a drug conspiracy that spanned three states. Etienne DeVoe has been in custody along with eight other members of the operation. The group reportedly operated between Fairbanks and Anchorage, down to Seattle, and also in parts of Florida. One co-defendant, Stephen Taylor, already pleaded guilty to two counts in his federal indictment and is scheduled to be sentenced next month. Another Fairbanks man, Gabriel Haynes, was sentenced to serve 18 months in prison for his part in the conspiracy. DeVoe's trial is being held in an Anchorage federal court. All right, when we come back, the Alaska State Troopers are on a mission to raise awareness about suicide prevention. Also Saturday night, close to 100 men and women shaved their heads in support of the battle against childhood cancer. These stories and more when we return. Stay with us. Welcome back. New Chief of Police Randall Aragon received a very special gift this weekend from a well-known Native organization. Steve Guinness, Executive Director of the Fairbanks Native Association, Association rather, presented the police chief with his own chief's necklace. Now, it's a traditional piece of jewelry. Guinness offered the necklace to show the Native community's gratitude to Aragon, who has enacted a community policing initiative in the city. Aragon has concentrated on uniting the police with the Native population in his recent months as head of the department. Aragon told us the Fairbanks Police Department's goal is to build a strong partnership by participating in many community events. Very important. It was uh, before I even arrived, the mayor, it was one of the mayor's top concerns and uh, one of my goals. And I've talked it over with every officer and every employee and, you know, that's, that's uh, a very important matter for them. And, you know, when he presented the award, it, it solidified the fact that we're going in the right direction. And that's important to me because, you know, we, we need to work together to build this partnership and, and bridge all those gaps. And Alaska wildlife troopers are hitting the trail to raise awareness about suicide prevention. 
Law enforcement officials will be snow machining more than 1,000 miles across the state, visiting at least 10 villages in rural Alaska. The trip is expected to launch from battles tomorrow and reach Kotzebue on April 1st. Alakakit will be the first school on the visit, followed by schools in Hughes, Kobuk, Shugnak, Ambler, Kiana, Norvik, Selawik, Buckland, and finally Kotzebue. The Fish and Wildlife Service helped to fund the ride by donating $6,000 to cover the fuel costs. The troopers who are a part of this program have dealt with the issue of suicide, and they want to help youth learn about the warning signs and deal with the challenges surrounding the issue. They gave a presentation in the gyms, and um, you know, and one of the first things that they ask is, okay, how many people here have had a friend, a family member commit suicide? And um, I know at one small school, just about everybody raised their hand. But they do when they go on these snow machine trips. They all, they're all from rural Alaska, so they, they grew up in the village. They know what village life is like. And they go out there and they say, look, we know there's hope. I mean, look at us. We grew up in villages. You can track the troopers' progress throughout the program online via a spot locator. Over 90 men, women, and children shaved their heads bald to raise money in the fight against childhood cancer in the United States. Ryan Grimes was there. He has the story. Oh we look oh great. God, yes. <laughs> we look awesome. Several other men, women, and children made similar remarks at the St. Baldrick's fundraiser this year. The local group of firefighters in the Fraternal Order of Leatherhead Society hosts the event annually in Fairbanks. 2015 marks the 12th year they've been shaving heads to fight childhood cancer. To date, before the total um, that we'll find out from this event, we've almost reached $320,000 in the 10 years we've done it here in the Fairbanks. So uh, we're at 20,000 now, so that will put us uh, that much farther ahead. St. Baldrick's has raised over $100 million nationwide since its inception. Fairbanks local couple Kevin and PJ O'Reilly raised about $300 to get their haircuts this year. Us being able to do this, you know, we've been so lucky. And uh, just being able to share a little bit of what they went through is, is wonderful. And to be able to help a little bit. I mean, I mean these children are, are dealing with a disease which could take their life. And the treatments aren't all that fun if you think about them. And um, anything to, to help them out, keep their spirits up maybe, why not? My grandmother fought cancer off and on. She had it four times. She went um, a lot of her life without hair, and she would always tell me, I just want hair. And I think it's, you know, you walk through the grocery store and people look at you, and they're like, why are you bald? I'll tell them, I shaved my head to fight childhood cancer. And that's great. It shouldn't matter. If you weren't at the actual fundraiser, you can still donate online. It's, it's website driven. Um, the stbaldricks.org is the website, and they can go and they can find our event, which if they search under Fairbanks, Alaska, or under Pioneer Park, uh, they'll find our, our event page and they can and donate online that way. They can donate towards a specific person, towards a team that has been formed, or to the event overall. This is Ryan Grimes reporting. What a great event yeah, for absolutely. a great cause. Absolutely. Very good. All right, Joe Cook is back from Anchorage and is up next with your weekend recap in sports. That's right, ONAP results, state basketball, and more after the break. Welcome back, Interior Sports fans. Show Cook here with your weekend recap. This Monday evening, at the end of three days of intense sled dog racing at the Jeff Studdard Race Grounds, one man and his dogs claimed the top prize at the GCI Open North American Championships. Buddy Streeper won Sunday's final race by almost two minutes over Lena Glad and Streeper out of Nelson, British Columbia, won the granddaddy of them all on Sunday with a total time of 229 minutes, 34 and a half seconds, winning by almost seven minutes in a 25 team field. Eric Rinneberg, a rookie from Sulcha, was the runner up. Gary Markley was third, Jason Dunlap fourth, and John Earhart finished fifth overall. Here's Streeper on the win on the 70th anniversary, anniversary of the legendary Open North. 
It feels great. Uh, it's been a long time since we've uh, had the success up here. It's been uh, eight years now, and uh, the dogs performed beautifully, and we had a great run. It was good to be back in Fairbanks. The young mushers coming up, the villages of the Alaska being represented, um, all sorts of uh, different uh, mushers here from all over the world, and a huge field, 26 mushers. I don't know when it was that big before. It's strong. Uh, mushing's alive and well here in Alaska, and we look forward to, uh, to playing our role and coming up here and supporting this race. I mean, it's, it was a pleasure to come here. And it was too much to overcome in the 4A girls basketball final for the West Valley Wolfpack. The unbeaten West Valley Wolfpack lost senior point guard Carla Marquez to a broken wrist in the semifinal. Then junior guard Amber Smith, she went down with a knee injury in the first quarter against Diamond. Even with all that, West Valley displayed heart and guts and were in a close back and forth battle with the links. Alexis Shipman scored a season high 14 points for the pack and Ruthie Hebert, she nailed a huge three to make it a 47-49 game in the final minute. But Diamond quickly answered and got a clutch steal as well. They win 54 49, their first state title since 2006, and that was a win over North Pole. We've been in arguments, you know, blood, sweat, and tears, and we just, we, we pushed it out, and we managed to win that game, and it just feels amazing. It's so amazing. It's hard. It hurts, you know? It's, um, it's one thing if you can go back in the locker room and tell your girls, you know, you didn't show up to play. And the highly anticipated 3A boys title games between number one Barrow and number two Monroe. The Rams looking for an unprecedented four-peat while the younger Whalers squad looking for the upset. It was all defense, just an 18-14 game at the half. Barrow started the third quarter on a key 16-5 run to break away from Monroe. Edwin Erickson scored a game high 12 points for Monroe, but the Rams missed open looks at the rim, had some costly turnovers as well. Travis Adams and Kamaka Hepa finished with 11 points apiece for the Whalers. They're just freshmen. Barrow wins his first ever state title 50-40 to over Monroe, ending one dynasty and maybe starting another. Now we feel like we're going to keep coming and keep working, get better over the offseason. We'll be back here. Well, and stay. I'm not saying we're coming back, but we're coming to stay for sure. I'm not disappointed we lost. I'm disappointed we didn't play better basketball. I'm disappointed we didn't play our best game. I'm real proud of our guys. They represented our school and our, our community very well. And I want to say how happy I am for the people of Barrow. You know, they've waited a long time. For this, I was hoping it would be next year or the year after. <laughs> A sweep would have given the Fairbanks Ice Dogs sole possession of the Midwest Division. However, the Kenai River Brown Bears of all teams denied the Ice Dogs a sweep at least for one week. Fairbanks falls 2-3 after winning 4-2 on Friday night. The Ice Dogs never led in this one. Kenai's Evan Hauser made 48 saves as the Brown Bears were outshot 50-25. Ethan Samoza and Jesper Oval scored for the Ice Dogs, who are now tied with the Minnesota Wilderness at 80 points. Going to the final week of the regular season, the Ice Dogs host the Brown Bears this weekend in the Dipper. And after an exciting week in sports, here's the I-5 interior top five plays. At number five, Jaden Whiteside puts the moves on display, hitting a nice jumper for the Malamutes, two of his 17 points in Lathup's 55-72 quarterfinal loss against Service on Thursday. Number four, Hutchinson senior guard Ellie Vizi showing the range in the 3A girls semis. She went three for five from deep and had a team high 11 points in a 36-49 loss to eventual state champion Sitka. Number three, Monroe's Edwin Erickson spins and wins inside against Barrow in the 3A boys championship. The senior forward scored a game high 12 points in a 40-50 loss to Barrow. At number two, a clutch three ball falls from West Valley junior Ruthie Hebert, hitting that with a minute and a half left. In the she had a game high 21 points and 18 rebounds in a 49-54 loss to Diamond. At number one, interior mushers represent at the Open North American Championships four Salcha mushers placed in the top 15, taking spots two through four, led by rookie Eric Rennerberg's second place finish. To vote for the Player of the Week, click on your play on the i5 poll on WebCenter11.com. You can also comment on the KTVF Facebook and YouTube posts and send a tweet to KTVF11 Sports on Twitter for your vote. The Player of the Week will be revealed this Friday. The i5 Sports Report is brought to you by Adiant Orthopedic Physical Therapy. And that'll do it for sports tonight. Mike Schultz is next with your full weather forecast, and we'll catch you next time.
Hey everyone, welcome back into a Monday night edition of the Fairbanks Evening News. Mike Schultz with you once again for the weekend or for the for the night. I hope you had a good weekend. It was magnificent, lots of sunshine, and that is going to continue and get even warmer as the week progresses. Temperatures could be in the low to mid 40s by this next coming weekend. Is that great or what? Speaking of great, look at this photograph that was sent in by Tommy Toil in Healy. He was able to capture not only the aurora in the distance, beautiful shot there, but look at the fracturing of the ice on the pond that he's taking the shot from. What a great photograph that is. That's just gorgeous. And as always, if you have a photograph you want to share, by all means, send it to photos at ktvf11.com, and we'll share it with the rest of the audience. Here's your almanac for today. Right now, 30 degrees. That is our high for the day. The low last night, 16. Record high in 1915, up to 53 that day. And in contrast, 48 below in 1907. Your sunrise and sunset, about 12 hours and 42 minutes, a gain of 7 minutes from yesterday. On the satellite and radar, not a whole lot to talk about here. We're looking at high pressure really dominating the entire state, even over southeast Alaska. Nothing going on. Clear skies everywhere you look. Just a few bands of clouds, and that's going to continue. In fact, the latest uh, satellite picture, like I said, is showing noth nothing going on, and it reflects on the map, too. Look at the temperatures. 46 degrees at Ketchikan, the same for Juneau. Partly cloudy skies over southeast Alaska, where they were raining last week. A little shower activity over the Kodiak region and down around Cold Bay, and that is it. Elsewhere looking pretty good, 31 degrees here in the Fairbanks area, 45 at Anchorage, up and down the west coast. Temperatures very nice, 19, a little chilly in Nome, 6 below at Barrel, and Fort Yukon, 25 above. Lower 48 weather, a little bit of weather to talk about, more showers and move back in over the Pacific Northwest, otherwise nice up and down the west coast, and uh, nice temperatures in Denver, 69 degrees there, 75 at Dallas. Some very cold rain falling around the Minneapolis area, 32 degrees there. Showers around Miami and over the northeast, uh, New York, uh, kind of chilly, 38 degrees there. On the satellite and radar, you can see a little bit of activity moving across a small system, helping to bring that cold rain into Minneapolis. And there is the last remnants of any kind of snowfall moving across the Great Lakes over to the uh, Buffalo area. Uh, out to the west, there's your showers that we saw earlier on the uh, map. And what's going to be happening is severe storms are going to be setting up as a real contrast in temperatures is expected to explode tomorrow night, bringing damaging winds and large hail to a large area of the, the Missouri Valley. And as far as the overall jet stream, well, that's going to be taking a big dive down to the south. And when that happens, you get a lot of uh, violence going on in the atmosphere, especially with a good shot of cold air coming in from Canada. While out to the west, things look pretty darn nice. Well, back to Alaska for tomorrow. Sunny skies for Barrow, decreasing clouds for Nome, and scattered flurries in the Fort Yukon area. While here in the interior, couldn't be better. Lots of sun sunshine with uh, just a slight increase in clouds for the Fairbanks area, and temperatures slowly warming up. Tomorrow's forecast for southeast Alaska, mostly sunny skies for Juneau, with a little rain developing at Ketchikan, while over the southeast, or southwest, I should say, I should say uh, rain likely for Cold Bay, isolated showers for Kodiak, and partly cloudy skies for Bethel and down around the south central sections. Sunny skies for Anchorage and Valdez, and mostly sunny skies for Homer. Okay, it's a new week, and once again, time for our kids' weather. And this week, we're going to be talking with the kids from the Northern Lights Academy. Here's a young man with an interesting story. Hello, my name is Isaac, and I go to Northern Lights Academy School. Here's my weather story. Once we were going, we went down to Valdez, and we set up our tent. It started to rain, but we finished our tent. We went inside, but when the rain stopped, instead of the puddles, it was about two inches deep. <laughs> Thank you, Isaac. And thanks to Mount McKinley Bank for sponsoring our kids' weather. Tomorrow night, we'll have another young man here with a very unique picture to share with us. Okay, here's your forecast for the remainder of the night. Six degrees, a few high clouds, otherwise clear skies. Who knows, you might see some more northern lights. We've been having them every night. Tomorrow's forecast, warming up a little bit more. Lots of sunshine and the extended forecast. How about consistency there? 40-degree temperatures, even the mid-40s by Saturday and Sunday, with overnight lows dropping to near 20, or actually rising, I should say, to the teens to near 20 degrees uh, all the way across the board there. And again, no precipitation expected. And what a great weekend it was. Lots of sunshine. And today it just continued, although it was kind of chilly. I wasn't expecting it to be that cool. But, you know, with the sunshine, it still felt great. 
Um, those temperatures are fabulous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like good melting weather right there. Oh, yeah. It's going to yeah. melt pretty good, yeah. Uh -huh. And Definitely. with no cloud cover, too, we'll get the sun's penetrating rays in there, too. Oh, yeah. Really Very good. But the question is, cleanup day is coming up soon, right? Oh, it's in May. In yeah, May. Yeah, we've got a little time for that. A little bit of time. I guess I'm jumping the gun here. Yeah. I'm so excited for spring. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very good. All right. Well, thank you, Mike. And that will wrap up this edition of the Fairbanks Evening News. We are glad you could join us. Tonight on NBC Nightly News, Texas Senator Ted Cruz today announced that he will be a candidate for president in 2016. That's up next with Lester Holt. You can join us here six days a week at 6 and 11 or online anytime at webcenter11.com. From all of us here at the News Center, we hope you have a good night. Good night.